to see how this pans out and I'm excited to see what happens and just another reminder of course both players have to bring uh, play game one with their primary deck so Rami will be on face we'll hunter Briathorn will be on at least the initial version of his paladin so let's dive straight in Lorinda yep I'll be looking for I mean I would expect Briathorn to have a good start here it's basically normal face hunter versus fairly normal aggro paladin that's a slight favor for the paladin for me um, but anything could happen in this matchup in all three of the games. And like you say, let's just have a look how it goes down. Uh, who, do you, who do you feel is going to take this one? So this matchup specifically, well, one, I don't have a lot of experience playing against Briathorn's Paladin, but I do right. have a lot of experience playing against this type of, like, aggro Paladin in general. And Rami has to kind of walk a bit of a tightrope here between... Pushing damage himself and not letting Briathon stick a relevant board because Conviction is pretty much the, the card that makes the deck, in my opinion, which means that if, if there are two minions stuck by turn five, Rami has to be prepared for hit, getting hit pretty hard. So already, Briathon with these Divine Shields, uh, with the Righteous Protector coming out, I think he's going for, yeah, is it, causing problems. And Rami does not have a pack leader right now, which is the number one card you want to be able to like get those rush one ones and trade away these minions. Because right now, he is, I'm not gonna say losing on board, but close to with the amount of trades he's gonna have to make. Yeah, he's also gonna have to keep his um, instinct in check because as a hunter, you quite often look to line up a piercing shot at an appropriate time. You might not be able to use that piercing shot on your opponent's minions. You can do the damage by shooting your own minions, but if they set up the robes and have a taunt in the way, you're gonna have to get through the old fashioned way by getting through your minions. And hunter players don't think that way instinctively. Yeah, the, the big factor for me is Rami cannot realistically beat Blessing of Authority without the um, the Rinlin's Rifle into Freezing Trap. And if that's on a Torn, well, that's just worse. Uh, so Rami, I think going into turn five, it, you know, all eyes have to be on the board for Rami here. And he needs to set up either he's, there's no minions for Frenetic. Uh, for Frenetic, I just read the name. That's wrong. Well um, done. <laughs> it's, it's Rami versus Briathon. There we go. Thank you. Someone trying to keep me on my toes here. Um, I thought we'd just rewound time. Uh, but yeah, so for Briathon, he needs something to stick on board by d like for that turn five play, whether it's above conviction or whether it's the Blessed of Authority. Yeah, and the board fight is going the way of the Paladin. The first day of school doing a lot of work here. And one thing that Hunter does struggle with is turning it around on board, I find. Uh, when you start to get behind against Paladin, it can just be difficult to get back in there. It really can. Like I said, Pack Leader, or yeah, did I just call it Pack Leader when it's not? It's Pack Runner, apologies. Uh, pack Runner is a big deal for Hunter in this matchup, but also the Rhinos are the way to go as well if you need to fight back. Oh, mm -hmm. It just, as we can see, might be a tiny bit too slow as Brython has multiple ways to put two additional minions on the board right now. Yeah. And something I've always found with Brython as well, when, um, when he's brought his own decks... Um, he is very hard to beat sometimes. As long as the deck, like, performs like a deck, which it usually does, um, he, he understands what he's done in his own deck. And a lot of sort of lower ranked players can learn from this. If you put cards in your deck, you know why those cards are in your deck. If you copy a net deck, some of the stuff, unless you're reading a guide or something, is actually often a bit of a mystery <laughs> as to why it's there. But if you built the deck, then you don't have any mysteries. It's all your own, like, brain work. Yeah, man, this is where things can go downhill very, very quickly here mm. for Rami because Blessed of, of Authority, sorry, can be landed here even with a trade, right? So Brython could just put both minions into the Rhino, I think I like, and then just blessing the Goody Two Shields. And then outside of, like I said, Rinlin's Rifle exactly, Let I don't know what he can see. do. And he even has the, the safety net. If Rinlin's comes down into secret, Brython has Crab Rider to play next turn. Which, which cancels out the freezing trap, which is huge. Yeah, and Felmore isn't going to get it done. <laughs> Scavengers isn't going to get it done. It's like the worst cards you could have to turn a board around. Yeah, I thought he might do this. This only scares me because if it's piercing shot, then... Yeah. I feel like you just get destroyed if it's piercing shot. The longer he thought... It. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I don't know about this. I think I would have just made a, a massive Divine Shield. 
Because mainly yeah. because he has the this makes more sense if he's scared of Rinlins, even though like you could just tank nine for the Rinlins rifle there. But with the crab rider, I think that was so safe. Yeah, with the Rinlins comment, maybe something something freezing trap. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to split it up that way, but not how I saw it, but the longer he thought about it, the more I thought he might actually have spotted something that we haven't in terms of doing it a bit differently. So that's how he went for it. It's going to hold that conviction. Obviously, mm. gets the spell burst effect from the goody two shields. And most importantly, doesn't have anything else to play next turn anyway. So he'll always have the mana. Yeah, Rami getting that Felmore down, obviously. Damage from hero power. This is not the time to be weaving in hero powers. You are panicking and trying to stay in the game of Hearthstone right now. Yeah, this is the type of game where Six Orc can actually be clutch, though. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hunter vs. Paladin, you want to, if the game is going to continue, right, if you didn't just go nuts turn one and two and win, uh, you, you really want Six Orc Prime to be like the next draw for Rami here. That is how we'll win this game. Without that, though, I think it might be a struggle. Yeah, with that in mind, then, does Briarthorn need to sort of go for it now, right? No, I mean, it's not going to matter because he can go for it. There's not really much of a decision, but stop trading and start getting that damage done in case the um, the Prime is picked up. Because that is yeah, I mean, way back into the game. Yeah, he's showing 18, right? Was that Rinlins? It was. Yes. Nice explosive trap might be handy. Yep, okay, you're looking for explosive, and then he Warsong Wranglers, the Zixor Prime. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he's hey, really excited. Knows. He's, he knows. He's feeling it. The Braggart's going to be pretty huge. The, the, yeah, the Braggart just is it, what? Four health, seven attack. It's big, but Zixor's bigger. That Zixor hits for six. <sighs> and can value trade with everything on board as well at 5 health. Well, now the Braggart will be a 7-2. Which it would have been anyway if Explosive Trap had gone off, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I guess that's the point, right? He wants to proc the secret. But now he's not going to have 7 attack. Excited. Yeah, but now he's not going to have 7 attack either. Yeah, he's not going to have a Braggart. I think he's just going to keep it back. I guess. Oh, well, this is just game. Ho, <laughs> He's saving in case he gets another buff, but it's going to be too slow because the Zixor Prime, we can see. He's got to assume it's not there, of course. Yeah. To be fair to Bright no. just be a bad card. Is well, it? no, he, he, he knows, oh. right? He pulled it. Yeah. He pulled it with Wrangler. So he, and, and you have to know it's Zixor. There's no way Rami would pick a, a Rhino there. And the, the big problem here is, okay, I was going to say, I don't even know what that would have to have been, and that's just going to be game one. Rami made the right decisions, and Bryathon, I think, might have missed out on something. I think he would have had to have played the Braga uh, after yep. seeing the turn, even though it would have gone into an explosive, because he knows Zixor is 100% picked in that out. I guess, I guess the only way it's not picked is if it's drawn, but if it's drawn, it's kind of the same it's outcome because anyway, they can still yeah. well although they're not buffed and they they die they still do enough right so bit of a rough one there for Brython especially because he got off to a, what I think was a pretty solid start um, I, I'm loving that replay of just a, a full cam Brython uh, but yeah I think this was the issue for me I think if he just made the Bless of Authority on the 4-2 mm -hmm. and then just had he had the Crab Rider to test for freezing worst case best case well Hunter can't kill it it's a Divine Shield massive minion. It just won't ever die. So I think that, for me, was the, the big difference in the game. And he actually gave Rami, like, a, an opening because he could kill off that, uh, what was it, 8-2 at the time? 9-2? Yeah, 7-2, I think. 9-2. One of the two. It was huge. It was a huge two. It gives plus 8, plus 8, right? So it'll be a 9 It's going to be 9. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and this doesn't get easier. If he plays the secondary deck, if um, Rami plays the secondary deck... I've been jamming that this afternoon. I saw this lineup. I thought, I've got, okay, I've got to jam this. And against normal Paladin, that Hunter suddenly becomes so much easier to play when you're hitting the Paladin things with 8 8s and goodness knows what other nonsense in there. Um, if he does switch the secondary, which is what I assume Justice. he will do, the, the matchup does become easier. This. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what happens here because I actually think he should stay as air face, mm -hmm. I think, just because. You can't let Paladin get ahead. He ne Rami nearly lost that game because Brython had the board, right? For example, if he hadn't have drawn Rinlins, he was in trouble. Um, and in the other version, in his secondary, he plays like Breeder, two mana, one, one. You, you just 
you can't just play a two mana one one against Paladin. It's better to live, especially an aggro right. Paladin. So I actually think he he should stick to his face. I've not actually got confirmation into which deck yeah, he's chosen. Well. Uh, so we're not. We'll we'll have to discover that with the uh, uh, with this. Hang on, I can check pretty quickly. Here. Yes, he's stuck. I okay, believe if my information is right, he's stuck. Yeah. Yeah, Pearson Chuck would be in both anyway, though. But yeah, he has stuck. He doesn't have a oh, okay. player, so. Wait. What am I looking at? Okay, let's ignore what I'm looking at. I'm just going to listen to Raven. Go for <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, okay, so once again, the Murloc's going to clear up the board. And this time, Rami's hand, again, is not going to be able to get to the board. Um, but we thought that last game, and he turned it around. Yeah, I think... I think Brython handed him that, though. So I, I guess we'll see how this happens. The, it's obviously awkward, Rami. Again, Let no pack think. runner is frustrating, especially on Coiners Hunter. It's so strong. But Coin Rinlins can help. Coin Piercing Shot. But Rami might have to take a, a, a back seat in this matchup here, unless he starts drawing great off the top. Brython, I think that's a completely good, just a reasonable option here for Crab Rider. Might be a tiny bit afraid of Coin Zigsaw, but mm -hmm. I think you're always afraid of Coin Zigsaw as Paladin. You don't want a you know a, a, th a two four being able to rush in and clear off the minions off board. Yeah. Okay, that's something. He gets to kill the Murloc. That's a big deal. He just needed something to bridge the gap before he could start coining out these plays now. The trouble is though against Paladin, you're not bridging the gap in your curve when they're making so many things for me. Um, you know, you clear up the board, but if the Paladin starts with more things than you at the start of their turn, look what's going to happen now by the end of it. Okay, he made it even worse by getting first at school, but yeah, suddenly this is just very difficult to deal with. Rinlins is nuts though, right? Like, if mm -hmm. he gets Explosive Trap, yes, there's a Divine Shield, but it's on a 2-1, who cares? So I, I actually think Coin Rinlins Rifle here, and then he can use the Piercing Shots to back up whatever happens post Rinlin Rifle Secret. He's going to actually trade. Interesting. Yeah, we saw that the board, you know, if he doesn't hit the explosive truck, the board can get out of control. Yeah. So he's, you know, you're 50 50 or 60%, whichever it is. Some, um, some classes have five, some classes have six. But he's still really clinging on. He's got no way to populate the board quickly. He's got a very slow hand. So if the Paladin just spews minions everywhere. You know, Rami could still be in trouble. I, yeah, and this turn, I'd really like to see Brython just play everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe not everything. He can he can just play the ca Crab Rider, I guess, and hold the abusive. Sure. He's playing the plus eight, plus eight next turn anyway, and the hammer the turn after, so when does the abusive really get played? I, I, he can hold it if he well, wants. Well, the thing is, abusive just dies to explosive. Sure. Yep. Oh, oh dear. Okay. And that's one of the things when we talked about you have to make some concessions in your in your hunter deck because of the nature of specialists. This is the concessions Rami's made. Mm. He's had to play a slightly jankier curve than you would normally play to make sure that his secondary deck works. And this is still his primary, mm. but just some little bits and pieces are slightly slower in the curve. Obviously, he could just draw this in the normal deck anyway, the cards he has picked up like double tracking, I'm, that sort of thing. I'm actually a little bit surprised he's played tracking here. I think personally, I, I would have looked at just swing into the shield, review, obviously after you see mm. his explosive is nice, uh, but then just go for like, just pierce and shot the Murloc, for example, and just get get it gone. Sixor is a good pickup though. Oh, I like swing into tracking, but he wants to get the information from the tracking first to see what sort of trouble he is in. Um, but now obviously he can't easily pick up the yeah, and, times and, either. And the, in my experience, Lorinda, Brython should just win now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially with Rinlin's gone, like, uh, uh, you can see Rami there, like, now he has to, like, piercing shot, piercing shot, or piercing shot Rhino, I guess. Yeah. This is where Hunter gets a little bit awkward. It's, it's great against some of the slower decks, Priest in particular, to have this ongoing card advantage, this <gasps> rumbling damage. Insane! He killed it! He actually killed it! That roll of the Demon Companion has just, again, changed up this game. Rami might be able to win this. But still only doing one thing a turn, but yeah, he could 
but Byathorn's still in the driver's seat with the stuff he has in hand is so really irritatingly big. Mm. And Rami can only do one thing a turn. Well, now he can do two things. That helps. Hey, he could always do two things. That hero power is a beautiful thing, Lorinda. Don't ever question uh, Sure. I mean, y you're right, but also 26. Nah. Oh, you, you, there's no respect. See, Rami knows. He knows. This is it. I mean, there's no point playing the, the pack runner to get a 1-1 one, one when the weapon insta-kills it, right? Like the, the, he has Barrack to draw more stuff. He's probably going to draw a quick shot, although he does actually run a scout one single scavengers that he could draw from Co uh, Kodo Bane as well. So he took five, right? I'm assuming from the yeah. This is yeah. It's plus two, plus two. Yeah. So spam the board if you take that. Your favorite card. Yep. There must always be a Raven that's playable in Hearthstone. It's part of my uh, contract. Uh, Brython. <laughs> yeah, you, you are right, though. As long as he goes wide, he will beat Hunter. Like, that's what Hunter cannot really realistically do. Especially now the, the rifle's gone. Not that these would be affected by explosive that much anyway. 24, so there's no great damage plan. I think I like making the rhino here mm. and just getting some damage in, getting rid of a minion. Oh. Yep, this is fine. Yeah. And and Face Hunter can go late. It can play a longer game and this golem is lifesteal something, I'm not hundred percent sure which. Yeah, we thought it might be plus two and then he went wide, but we're not sure. It was two cards plus two or something else. This abusive sergeant's coming in clutch though, can kill off the rhino. Mm. The Braggart becomes a 5-4, which is not bad at all. Or five. Oh, yeah. oh, so he must be plus two, because always he played the Golem first, right? Because get he, the Braggart would get the Golem. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Give your minions. Yep. Oh. Ouch. This is a turn you aren't coming back from. Yeah. I think you 100% trade. I don't think there's any reason not to. Oh, he's trading with the face. Yeah. There's a lot of lethals next turn this way. The golem's got um, lifesteal as well, so. Masterful. That gets piercing yep. shot. It's over. It's one game all. Whew. Yeah, and, and that was more like it. Although the uh, the Murloc was killed after the Bless of Authority, of course, which was a huge deal. If that didn't go down, Rami probably concedes on that turn. I would anyway. Uh, but that was a big deal. But the fact that just about Bryathon kept wide enough, like that first day of school was really big. The fact he had the refill with the golem as well. Uh, it was a big deal there. And, and Rami had a, frankly, terrible opening hand. Double piercing shot. He had nothing to do in the early turns uh, and had like Code of Bane stuck in his hand as well all game. So that is one of those bad hunter hands where like, your, your curve actually just stops at five as face hunter with only a few cards five and two cards at, at four or four cards at four i guess but everything else is like three and below and you just didn't draw any of it so a bit of a rough one there but brighton did a good job at just keeping wide and keeping the pressure on because again outside of explosive hunter can't do it right imagine that game or even the game before or if there was no rinland's rifle which is a one-off yeah. deck obviously yeah. like you just lose it's crazy yeah, it's a card that I've had mixed results with is the rifle. Um, on the plus side, you see what it can do there, how powerful it can be. It can be equally powerful if your opponent makes a 12-12, you get freezing trap Justice as well. We'll on the downside this. is it often interrupts what you're trying to achieve. Like, it's quite slow. Um, and it's slow on the turns where you want to be piercing shots, you want to be rhinos, you want to be all that mid-range stuff, and you're, you're playing kind of a mediocre-looking weapon. And if it misses, you can get into a mess with it. Yeah, it's one of those de uh, cards, one of those decks. It's one of those cards that you, I think you just have to play because it mm -hmm. will just win you some games. <laughs> like, and it did. I mean, that. yeah, point yeah. proven already. Yeah. Both of these players last year um, struggled a little bit to acclimatize the GM, but I think they're both a lot more comfortable than they were now. So... Whoever gets the point out of these two this week will be in a reasonable spot to actually sort of get into another season. Rami, in particular, has been pretty comfortable on social media and such, like just you know, explaining his mm -hmm. decks and talking about GM and saying how... I'm, I'm Rami's favourite caster. 
Are you? Confirmed, yeah. Confirmed. Oh, he's, he's not settled in that well, then. Check, check his social media. That's just true. I will. I have it screenshotted and tweeted, it's fact. Anyway, diving into these <laughs> opening hands, though, this is what you want for face on tier. Tons of options. He can, like, that turn, if Brython, instead of playing the sneaky delinquent, played, like, first day of school, some minions. He had Kolkar pa Pack Runner and Adorable Infestation, right, with coin, which goes super wide on the board and allows him to trade. Okay, that didn't happen. He didn't go wide. I'll just get the Felhound down. So, Rami has all the options in the world here, and again, Brython looks like he might be relying on a combination of Kazakus and his blessing of authority to get the job done. Yeah, both players with good draws this time around, but you know, we're going to get to see what the Hunter does best. But we also see what Brython's deck does. Like, make a stealth thing that can't be interacted with and then give it Divine Shield is, is the plan, basically. Um, or just, you know, generally stop people interacting with your minions. So I'm going to guess it was Rush summon a copy. A guess. But Lifesteal was an option. And when Lifesteal is an option versus Hunter, you've got to look at it. Oh, it was. Oh, there we go. I'm good. You are good. Been a long day for you. You've obviously like, <laughs> found your superpowers. That one priest mirror made my whole day long. Uh, believe it or not, it was that powerful. Are you are you gonna are you gonna dream tonight, Raven? Yeah. Oh yeah. I dream of turns like this though. Coin Barrett Kodo Bane with the Mancrix wife pull as well. Put so much uh, not only damage but just so much health on the board. And the coolest thing about this is it draws you an additional card. And guess what? Hunter wants card draw. That's something that this current iteration of Hunter does really well. It, it doesn't necessarily draw millions of cards, but it creates stuff and it's, yeah. it keeps coming at you really, really deep into the game. It's rare that you actually have an empty hand as Hunter now, mm. which is nice. A nice change from the past, what, five years? <laughs> I, can, I can just hear the excitement in your voice um, as soon as Hunter is mentioned now, whereas the last couple of years you've been, yeah, I, I liked the Hunter when it was a class that existed as well. But <laughs> yeah, you're back on it now, Raven. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're going for it again. Tough turn here. Golem allows him to push the most damage. He can double trade into these, yeah, in 5-4 as well. Gets to push 6, okay. I think Brython now's priority after seeing this man quick is to just stay like a couple of minions ahead on board, but we're about to see why that always doesn't work when you have a pack run in your deck. Yeah. This thing is absolutely silly. This just wins games on turn two with coins so often on its own against like everything. Yeah, and if, for example, like Rami got Kolek instead of the Taunt there, it, it, oh, it's so insane. You just make like two one rush beasts like all day. I want a 10 health grab up, but I'm not sure what else I want. Because obviously you want to get the Blessing onto something first. That, I think Brython's got to accept that the Blessing is done this game. It's The game might be done, but he, the Blessing is, is out of it. Yeah, both decks do work in a similar fashion where, I guess, loosely similar. Because Hunter can play off-board, it just doesn't want to. Whereas Paladin does require the board to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. There's no consistent damage from Paladin. There's no damage hero power. There's no damage spells. They're all buffs. And Paladin normally cashes in with the Divine Shields, right? Like, awkward to deal with. Normally makes your minions stick. And also, why Brython's playing these stealth minions too. You want minions on board to do things with. So I do like this turn here from Brython too. Get the Divine Shields down. Yes, they die, but if they die, it buys Brython more time. And if they don't die, he can start sticking some more stuff. But honestly... Yeah, it's not the minions I, dying that he's worrying about, is it? It's he, he might actually yeah. just die in the next two turns. It's actually very close to the mm. point of Rami just going face here. Yeah. I think Rami needs to work out how he can set up a two-turn lethal and deal with as much on the board as possible. Like, he could just jam everything face and have an I, easy two-turn lethal. When, when you're that easily two-turn lethal, you can afford to make a trade. I think he can bump a one and play the Rhino here to kill the 4-2. Yeah, I, I like this. Then he can just play a 1-1 one, one after the fact, or all the uh, Wobbletingers, whatever. And then just, yeah. he could chuck everything face. It looks like he's going to go for the trade, but the trade yeah. feels... A little bit disappointing. Well, let's let's count. Let's see if he's actually still got lethal. That's that's the key, right? If he's still got lethal, he can, he can get away with his trade. So seventeen. Oh yeah, still have it because he yeah. got fifteen, right? Yeah, so thirteen. He's got that on board. He's got hero power. He's fine, right? He is. 
I guess the five over hammer of the hand. Yeah, ha hammer of the narrow was the consideration there, but Rami is going to take it. I love it. Hunter wins. That's all I ever want to see. And Rami's excited. And I know especially, like, Rami's going to feel it even more because he he's just brought Hunter, right? He's brought this. It was clearly something he uh, and probably his practice partners thought up. And it's doing well. He's now through to top eight with Hunter. Like, again, like, we've only seen three classes in uh, really in uh, EU uh, this weekend. And now, you know, he's doing it with something different. Yes, it's against his aggro paladin, but I think that's a very, very good win for Rami there. Yeah, and he's gone through the nerves, Barry. He doesn't look perpetually scared. He looks like he, I've said it during the match, but he looks like he belongs in GM. Obviously, you know, he has his moments like any Grandmaster does of being a bit scared of what's coming off the top, but he's just enjoying it. Yeah, it's just and pumped. If you can enjoy, he really is, he's, he's stoked, Raven. And if he can enjoy Grandmasters rather than perpetually worrying about if you're getting relegated or whatever, just get on with it and do the thing you're here to do. You will do so much better without all that extra pressure on yourself. And he's doing a good job of it this year so far. Yeah, and he gets my stamp of approval. I think Rami actually played uh, the, the deck very, very well in those uh, kind of awkward Victory. circumstances or awkward moments. He, I think he made the correct decisions even in the game he lost. Uh, he, he did all right there. So great job for Rami. A 